Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week, hopefully, we sort out that clutch for good. All right, guys. Uh, for those of you who saw last week, we finally got Harry on the dyno. It is, uh, it's running. It's going reasonably well. There are definitely a few things that uh, raise their ugly head on the dyno, which is always a good way to uh, find things out. There's a couple of minor oil leaks and things like that that I need to go through and fix. Uh, but obviously the biggest issue was that clutch. The clutch is still horrible. The issue is, uh, I've, I've come to realize, is less the leverage. It is actually the fact that the cable does a 180 degree loop to come back to the pedal. Unfortunately, it's, it's very difficult to remake the factory pedal set up. So basically the way the factory pedal works is when you press the pedal, there is an arm coming off the pedal and there's a lever in the tunnel in the center of the car that actually pulls the cable like that. Whereas with the pedal set I've got, um, the pull of the pedal, the pull of the cable is on the bottom of the pedal. So the cable has to turn around and come back to actually get the, the pull that's necessary. It's very difficult. It would be very difficult to manufacture some sort of, or to modify this pedal with an arm to come off to, to actually do that uh, factory style pull. So I've looked at a couple of different options. Basically, my, my two main options really are, I can either go back to the factory pedal box, which is gonna take a lot of work because of all the work I've done setting up the e-throttle in this car. Um, I've also set it up for dual brake master cylinders, so I'd have to change that all back. And, uh, and then obviously set the clutch up again, get another factory clutch cable, which I don't have. Uh, so there's lots of those things that are gonna be much more difficult. Whereas it's gonna be still a bit of work, but less difficult to set up a hydraulic clutch. So that is what I am planning on doing. All right, so under the car here, here, this is actually the, uh, the clutch lever. So this needs to be pulled in this direction and that's what activates the clutch. Now, the cable sat before through this little tab on the bottom of the gearbox and, uh, and pulls the clutch through this way. Now, I've seen a couple of different cars that have done hydraulic conversions on these gearboxes. Uh, a lot of them are when the gearbox is being used in another different type of car. Uh, but uh, they often cut this tab off of the gearbox. Now, as this gearbox is quite uh, valuable, any old Porsche parts now are insanely expensive, I don't particularly want to cut up the gearbox, making it useless, uh, making the case of it useless for anybody else because you can't, it's magnesium. Uh, it is extremely difficult to melt magnesium because magnesium catches fire. So uh, it can be done, but it's not everyone can do it. I definitely am not ever going to try it. Well, not at the moment anyway, because it's beyond me. Uh, so we need to come up with a method to be able to pull this cable, uh, uh, pull this arm with my slave cylinders. Now I bought this and this is a pull type slave cylinder. So most slave cylinders usually push out when you uh, come under hydraulic pressure, whereas this particular one pulls, which is what we need. We want it to pull, but I need to be able to mount it so that it can pull this arm. Now, one of the issues that I've sort of come up with with this is this end, it, there still needs to be a little bit of movement because this arm travels in an arc. It doesn't go, it's not completely linear. So I need to have at least a little bit of uh, flexibility in this. And um, so, and pulling on this angle like this is definitely not going to work. I can't sort of go around it. Also, I need to take into account that this is the lowest part of the uh, the engine underneath here. Like you've got the, uh, uh, the, the gearbox mount on this end and this is the lowest part of the car. So I don't want this hanging down underneath where this can potentially get hit um, if I hit a speed hump or a dip in the road or something. So it's gotta be tucked up higher. So what I'm looking at is, I've been looking at this position up in here and because I need a bit of movement, I'm not thinking that a solid rod would be the best way to do it. So what I'm actually considering doing is making up a mount for this master cylinders sit up here, or the, sorry, the slave cylinders sit up here, and then actually connect to a very short piece of cable that can still pull through a, uh, a cable mount through this tab and just pull the, uh, pull the pedal from here. That is uh, what I'm going to work on building up today, and hopefully it works just the way I hope it does.
All right, after a lot of going backwards and forwards, I've uh, made up my bracket here and I've just uh, temporarily bolted it onto the side of the gearbox. So this has to sit in a nice line underneath the car so that it doesn't sit too low. And my slave cylinder is gonna sit up on this. Now I'm gonna have an extra brace that's gonna bolt on on the side here that I'll weld together. So this is all nice and structurally solid. It's not just held on by one uh, one bolting spot. It'll be on three bolting spots, nice and solid point for my slave cylinder. I went through all the effort of building this whole bracket contraption thing and it's too short. So uh, I had to make another one up out of a piece of angle. There's the uh, slave cylinder. So now I need to start looking at the slave cylinder and work out how I'm actually going to attach the back end on to this angle piece. So uh, let's make a, another bracket. Okay, so after a bit of playing around, I've basically made a bolt-on part for my slave cylinder. So I just uh, cut out a bit of square tubing here that fits nicely into my little bracket up here. I'm just going to get this old cable out of the way. Uh, this sits up nicely and lines up perfectly with the hole in the, uh, the existing hole in the gearbox. So that is where I'm going to put it on and uh, uh, eventually weld it into position. So the next thing I'm going to do is try and make up the cable end that will actually connect up to the the arm itself. I've still got to disconnect the computer because I don't want to fry the ECU when I weld the car. Uh, so let's uh, make a cable end. All right, so I've got my uh, cable just set up here. I'll uh, trim it to length when I'm ready. I've got this little connection for connecting out the end of the cable. The end of this unit, I just cut out a piece of square tubing and ran it all off. That's on the end of my slave cylinder. So this should be a reasonably straightforward task of uh, just welding this bracket on the end here on and welding this all up. So let's do that. Okay, and now we have the slave cylinder all mounted. So you can see I've got my short stretch of cable here going through into the end of my slave cylinder. My slave cylinder is all mounted up. This is also, I've double checked so that it is actually underneath, it, it's above the lowest part of the car. So this is not going to scrape when I hit things. Um, and also being directly between the axles means it's got a, uh, it's, it's generally going to have a bit more clearance than, you know, mid car or something like that. So it's only if there's a mound in the middle of the car, it should still not be the lowest point. Uh, so that is all pretty much done. So now we need to get it, uh, get the car back down and start looking at what we're going to do about the pedal itself. Okay, so now I have the slave cylinder sorted out, we're going to have a look at the pedal. Now, um, the issue with this pedal is obviously it was set up to work like that, and this end on the bottom here was designed to pull a cable. I want to actually set the pedal up so that it pivots a bit lower. In the car, there is actually bolt, bolt holes set up already to for this same pedal box to be set up as a hydraulic setup, but the pedal is different because this is actually got a, um, uh, you know, you can see it's got a brass bushings in it and stuff like that. And I thought about cutting this whole bit out and welding it in 20 mil lower in the pedal. And that's going to be a lot of work. The much easier thing to do is to actually just cut the bottom of this pedal off, keep that where it is, 
and there's already adjustments in the back of the uh, the pedal here. I can just slide the pedal foot up. Uh, it's got at least 10 or 15 mil adjustment already in it, but I can add more. I can uh, reinforce it more if it needs it, but I think it should be fine anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do to start with to get the pedal right, and then we need to work out uh, exactly how it's going to push on the master cylinder. Well, that was a lot of work to make this little piece that I made here. So um, what it is, is I got a piece of bar stock and I drilled and tapped it. I really need to get myself a lay. That's the next thing on my list. Anyone in Sydney locally knows someone who's got a, uh, uh, a, a reasonable lay that'll run on 240 volts and uh, uh, at a reasonable price, let me know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I've got this, uh, this piece here that uh, I made up. I drilled and tapped the end of it into 5 16 unfortunately it's imperial, but uh, we can't all help these things. And that screws onto the end of my master cylinder. Now, what that's going to act as is a, sort of a, a holder, so I can put a, a bolt through, so that I can slide a bolt through the end of it, through the pedal, and that can actually pivot in the pedal to, uh, to work my master cylinder. That is the plan. So this little piece now, the next thing I need to do is make the mounting spot on the pedal. So I actually drilled out and cut out the back of the pedal uh, so that this piece can actually sit in here and, uh, and pivot. I've worked out the height I need. So I'm gonna have to somehow fill in the holes, reinforce this whole plate and make a mounting spot for my little boss or whatever you wanna call it that I made up. All right, well, I've got the pedal ready to start playing around with, but before I go too far on that, I thought I, uh, I was trying to avoid taking the pedal box out of the car because I knew then I'd have to re-bleed the brakes, but uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to do that. I can't get around it, so to, uh, to do that, I'm going to drain the mass cylinders using my trusty super cheap vacuum bleeder and uh, then I can get into pulling out the pedal box and start making it all work. All right, and there we have it. The pedal is actually all in and working. And you can see here, I have plenty of travel with the pedal and uh, plenty of, of travel in the, uh, on the mast cylinder itself. So that is going to work a treat. The only thing I need to do now is because I've weakened the back of this pedal quite a bit, um, I might actually weld up some sort of uh, plates on the sides of this uh, of the pedal itself just to give it some extra reinforcing because uh, the last thing I want to do is to bend the pedal under the pressure of the clutch which should hopefully be a lot less than it was before now. Well, that pedal is much, much, much stronger than it was. 
uh, heavily reinforced with these sort of two and a half mil plates on either side. So that more than makes up for that little bit that I put out there. So we have a nice looking pedal. Now it's time to give it a, uh, a quick coat of paint and reassemble to fit back in the car. All right, I'm very happy with how this turned out. The, uh, the clutch pedal's in, the brakes, everything's all set up, ready to go, ready to go back in the car, which is fantastic. Now, the next thing I want to do before I put it back in the car, this time I'm going to bench bleed it. So my bleeding apparatus is all set up. I've got my um, reservoir stuck up in my vise up here so that it can uh, be, there's some head height there running down into the master cylinder. I've got a clear tube stuck into the master cylinder that I will uh, collect the fluid off of and uh, I'll be checking the tube for when it gets bubble free. When it's bubble free, we know we're done. So I'll do each one of these master cylinders and then we can put it back in the car. Alright, so the pedal box is back in the car, uh, the brakes are all hooked up again and I've run the new line all the way through to here for my clutch. I need to now mount my clutch uh, fluid reservoir and that is going to sit just about here somewhere so I need to start making a bracket and work out exactly uh, where and how to put this thing. Okay, so I have the reservoir, it's all fitted up, it's mounted up in with the others. Looking good, but unfortunately that's where I need to leave it because I am missing the fitting, the hard line fitting to go into the master cylinder. Unfortunately, it's a stupid imperial thread. So uh, I don't have that one that's in the right length that will work, so that'll wait for next week. And I had some really great news. Many of you will have seen Porsche Parts by Jeff.com, which is the, uh, the website that Rania and I set up that uh, basically lets you go and compare prices for Porsche parts for any year, model, whatever, any Porsches, and uh, it's completely free. And we actually finally have Porsche Parts by Jeff app. So um, you can actually go into the Android store and you can get the Porsche Parts by Jeff app, download it to your phone or tablet, and it works great. IOS, on the other hand, uh, we Rainy has made the app for uh, Apple iOS, but unfortunately, Apple, in its um, annoying wisdom, has decided to reject the app because it's too simple um, for everybody to use. So, um, basically, you can still get it if you. Uh, I've got to put a link in the description. If you go follow the link through, you can send Rainy an email. He'll give you a link so that you can get. You'll be able to use it like normal then. Um, but there's a limited number of those, so um, uh, let us know. And uh, the more of you who use it, the more we can go back to Apple and go, come on, let us, uh, let us launch this app. So go and check it out. As always, you can join us on Patreon as well and uh, watch the videos a day early. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.